You'll find articles, lists, and videos filled with all the tasks you should do to keep your garden looking its best. But what about those things you may be doing that are actually harming the health and beauty of your garden, wasting money, and potentially harming the environment? Here are some common practices I find good intention gardeners do, but shouldn't. Many gardeners skip this important step in keeping safe by reducing the risk and cost of damaging underground utilities. Whether planting flowers and trees, building a deck or patio, it's important to call before placing the first shovel in the ground. In this country, someone fails to do this and damages an underground utility every three minutes. Instead, call 811 at least three business days before putting the first shovel in the ground. This free underground utility locating service will contact all the appropriate companies who will mark the location of their underground utilities in your designated work area. This helps reduce the risk and inconvenience of accidentally knocking out power, cable, or other utilities while creating a beautiful landscape. When the garden season arrives, we can't wait to get out and start preparing the soil and planting. But cold and rain can keep the soil wet beyond the time we're ready to get started. Working wet soil ruins the structure resulting in clods, cracked soil, and compaction you'll be fighting for years. Instead, test the soil moisture before digging in. Grab a handful of soil and gently squeeze. If it breaks into smaller pieces, it's ready for you to get started. If the soil stays dry in a mud ball, it's too wet and you'll need to wait before working the soil. Too much water or water applied too frequently can lead to an array of problems and potentially kill your plant. Frequent light watering of lawns and gardens promote shallow roots that are more susceptible to drought stress. Applying water when the soil is already wet can lead to root rot and plant death. Instead, water thoroughly when the top few inches of soil are crumbly and moist. You'll need to water new plantings more often, keeping the soil around their roots moist but not soggy wet. Once established, continue watering thoroughly but less frequently. And make sure established trees and shrubs are watered properly during extended dry periods. Synthetic, natural and organic insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides are meant to kill things. Some kill a wide range of insects, fungi, and plants, while others are more targeted. All these chemicals have the potential to kill beneficial insects and plants when applied improperly. And they can be harmful to your health, pets, wildlife, and the environment if safety precautions aren't followed. Instead, keep yourself safe and achieve the best results by reading and following label directions. You'll find information on what the product controls, method and timing of application, and safety guidelines to minimize the risk to beneficial insects, wildlife, the environment, and you. If a plant sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Invasive plants were often used in landscapes because of their vigor, hardiness, and beauty. But soon we found many of these plants escape the garden invading wetlands, woodlands, prairies, and other native communities. These invaders crowd out the native plants wildlife depend upon, and many provide the perfect environment for disease-carrying ticks. Instead, check with your local University Extension office, nearby Nature Center, or online for a list of plants that are invasive in your area. Avoid planting these in your gardens, and if you already have them in your landscape, consider replacing them with a more suitable, when appropriate, native plant. And don't share invasive plants with family and friends. Your good intentions may create more work for them and problems in nearby natural areas. Many consider pruning a yearly task. Every plant in the landscape is shaped or reduced in size just because it's spring. Excessive pruning can lead to weak spindly growth that is more susceptible to damage and attack by insects and disease. Improper pruning is a lot of work, can eliminate flowers and fruit, and ruin the shape and beauty of your plants. Instead, prune trees and shrubs to establish a strong framework, remove disease, damage, and rubbing branches, and improve flowering, fruiting, and bark color. Make cuts above a healthy outward-facing bud or branch, or flush with the branch bark collar. Use bypass pruners and loppers, or saws for bigger jobs, to make clean cuts that close more quickly, reducing the risk of insects and disease moving in and harming your plants. 
Compost is a great way to turn insect and disease-free landscape trimmings into a wonderful soil amendment. Including meat, dairy, fat, and other animal products in the compost pile increases the risk of rodents moving into your landscape. Instead, only compost plant-based kitchen scraps, garden trimmings, and herbicide-free grass clippings. Avoid adding perennial weeds, annual weeds gone to flower or seed, and insect or disease-infected plants. These can survive in most compost piles, traveling back into the garden with the finished compost. Always check with your local municipality for any composting guidelines and restrictions. Even if you can water properly, nature may provide more water than your container garden needs. If there's no way for the excess water to drain, the soil remains soggy, roots rot, and the plant may eventually die. Instead, use containers with drainage holes and self-watering pots with weep holes. These openings allow excess water to drain out of the pot or water reservoir. This increases your gardening success by reducing the risk of you or nature overwatering your container gardens. With a few adjustments in your gardening habits, you can keep your garden and landscape healthy and looking its best.